Good evening, folks. Um, I'm Larry Butler for the East Hawaii Cultural Center, and it is my great pleasure and privilege today to introduce and have a conversation with our currently exhibiting artist, B.T. Bevel, who has filled their, our gallery with wonderful things behind me and around me and all across. The show is curated by uh, Andre Cromart, our curator and resident genius. And, oh, I see him sitting in the back. Hi, Andre. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, BT, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank uh, you. Aloha, brother. Appreciate you. Thank you. Let's see. You're a self-taught artist, you tell me. And yes, you've been painting for, oh, 30 years or so? Yes, long, long time. Long time. Wonderful. Well, thank you for sharing with us. And I also understand you're a serious musician. Yes, that as well. Yes. I love multimedia, you know, make films too. And you make films. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Incorporating Wonderful. the paintings into them, you know, just like a blast of art, you know, just, you know, mm -hmm. okay. you can get the mind going, you know. Great. Well, it sounds like you, for years you were in a band, the Crash Worship Touring the Country. Yes, yes, yes. And you now have your own band. In 90, 92 to 97, probably. Yeah. Oh, okay. Great. And you have your own band now, Mannequin Spill. Yes. And maybe we'll hear some of the music. Yeah, I hope to at the end, you know. We'll be, uh, sure. Yeah, totally. I started kind yeah. of with it. We'll see. Yeah, I have them here on my recordings if you're ready or whenever. Wonderful. You yeah. Oh, wonderful. Well, what we're going to do is talk through some images on PowerPoint. So if you'll give me a second, I will share the PowerPoint and. We'll get started here. BT, nice. can you see this? Yes, sir, I can. Okay, yeah. got this all figured yeah, out. That was a painting I did way back in uh, in Taos, New Mexico. Oh yeah? Yeah, I have studied Ifa, which is a, an African religious based thing. And mm -hmm. the bottom one next to the sun there is, uh, is my rendition of Alegba. And you know, he can be on your side or be used to alter to alter uh, reality sometimes is what I feel, you know. Um, it's a very powerful image and still, you know, throughout my I still worship him today, you know, and it's very uh, hmm. I think that he opened the doors to make this happen, you know. Those are my, my goodness. Thoughts. Yeah. Did you choose that as the cover image for the show? I think I did. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. One of my favorites. Andre, I mean, I know I worked with Andre Zeman, but yes, I if I if I recall, yeah, I believe so. Hmm. Well, let's take a look at the show here. Um, here's the an installation shot by our curator, Andre Kramars. And looking towards, we've got all sorts of things. We've got Large paintings, medium paintings, and tiny, tiny, tiny paintings. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Mixed together. Yeah. Uh, this is the one that greets us at the door. Yes. Sir. That's, that's, <laughs> for our first yeah, the time. Visitors, skin, you know? this is, yeah, this is this is there might be some, you know, some alien things going on there. I don't know. I can uh, I don't have proof, scientific proof, but hmm. you know, I think as we move forward into this How? new paradigm of living. Um, yeah, I like that one a lot. It came real quick. It was like spray painted mm -hmm. on the red and then the green. I tried to give it the hard skin because the, the true, uh, nature of the being was like a, almost like a reptilian situation going on. It does look like it. And then so in the middle they... there, just painting, you know, I tried to use a mirror paint. I would have loved it. You know, if I could have had a reflection of anyone looking at the painting, that they mirror themselves back at them, and that with that in his soul right there, in his in his abdomen, and then on his eyes. Hmm. I see. And I We're, think if you get close enough, I know I tried it myself. You know that if you get close enough, it can happen, and under a specific lighting. Uh huh. Which, which you know, lighting is always very imperative. Um. It can be. It, it it does it does fulfill that. Mm -hmm. I see. Where does the image come from? Do you think? Um, as most of them, it comes from a 
another dimensional, you know, my 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 a psychic thing going on, you know, perhaps being channeled. I don't, I don't know. I'm not really comfortable saying, like, you know, for a fact, you know, because some very so many people are skeptical on that uh -huh. aspect of life. You know, everyone lives very much in a three dimensional world, and you know, uh -huh. what, you know, if you can feel it, you can see it. But for me, I know that something else is happening. You know, and so these things come and. I try to portray them as best as I can um, uh -huh. and do them justice, as to say, you know, and and try to just put them on onto a two dimensional, you know, board or canvas. And and huh. yeah, so let's take a look at um, a statement of sorts that you've made here. Uh, here's a, another view of the gallery. And on the right, you can see that you have put up a drawing on the wall, full length, and added some text as well. Um, and here's the text here, the unseen hand. Tell us about the unseen hand. Uh, the unseen hand came from a journal entry. Uh -huh. I constantly, you know, the most vibrant in the middle of the night or at the end of sleep. Mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. we were going to use the picture, you know, just very small. And then, but then Andre suggested that I put it on the wall, which I was very enthused about. Um, you know, hmm. could you read a little bit? There in the dark, blended in the shadows, you know, and on and on it goes. And uh, huh. I would hope, you know, if I was, if I had complete control of the flow of traffic, you know, or people that come in, if they want to get a grasp of what's going on in this entire show, it would be for them to come in the door sit there read that in thorough you know all the way to the oh. end and then i think they would have a better grasp of what i'm trying to portray as an artist hmm. and it would just give them you know a prelude to what's happening you know of what i'm trying to say if that happens you know that's out of my control i don't know you know mm -hmm. i could just put it out there and see if uh you know if i get bites or whatever because i'm just trying to in a way, I'm trying to connect, you know, with people. I'm trying to connect with with this thing that's happening. And hmm. and I don't think that it's happening with just me. You know, I don't think I'm original in that situation. I don't think that I'm special or something like that. I just feel that that this is something that I feel as a human race, you know. I'll even go that big that I think we should be pay attention to. And I guess I won't be, it won't be known if that's what's happening until, I think until 2027 is what I think, but time will tell. <laughs> huh. could, could you read a little bit of it for us? Yes, I will. yes. They've always been there in the dark, blended in the shadows, the angels, the faces of the, in, of the past, the shifters of the present, future beings in the world, without time, omnipresent, they call to me mostly when I'm alone, yet they scream when I'm occupied with others. And I'm going to stop right there because these, uh, you know, I feel that, that I'm privileged. These things that happen that I try to reflect in these paintings, hmm. there has to be a certain environment for it to go on to. And I'm still trying to figure that out of what it is. But I do know when I'm in the midst of other of certain people and they, they 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 like they scatter you know they they leave and it's gone you know and then at other times when the situation is right they come full force and then i tried to and then i betray them onto whatever i have around me so that excerpt from that poem is very it means a lot to me because it's very it's it's vital for what i'm trying to do Okay, thank you. Let's so, take a look at some. Well, let me continue. Let me continue. Oh, okay. Uh, that's fine. Sure. So it says, you know, when I'm occupied with others, certain others, though, not all of them, they tend the vortex, unveil the portal, the alpha, the omega, shapeshifters, elegba, which was in the painting of the, of the, you know, the, the pamphlet, uh -huh. Osiris, Amon Ra, the Council of Nine. My ancestors, I paint them to honor them to step, to show and ask if you've seen them, you know? So I'm kind of asking the question, you know, because I do, 
so it's kind of like a it's a two-way street you know i'm asking if uh anyone else has has experienced these kinds of things you know because i i don't i i have checked online and i've seen things and i don't think it's only me you know i think like i said many people are very you know fixated on on you know this 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 whatever the uh you know the lens that they're looking through and i've kind of at this age and this age in my life i feel that there's something more and i i actually like feel very much more comfortable in that ethereal kind of realm you know and i think it's more important to what's going on and and if anyone was to take anything from the show it would be about that you know because <laughs> that's what i'm trying to convey Okay, thank you. Yeah. Let's take a look at some of the paintings. This is the one that's on the cover. I like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And you have told me some fascinating things about the painting. Um, who share those with us? Yeah, again, Alegba, you know, the African god. Um, the sun in the corner comes from tarot. Mm -hmm. That I, you know, I altered it and, and just wanted to. I'm trying to build power. I'm trying to build magic, you know, through the paintings. Hmm. And that's what I'm always... To me, there's no reason to paint things that I see or, like, the beautiful, you know. But what I'm trying to convey in my paintings is through is through uh, a magical experience that I feel is happening in throughout the whole... I mean, actually, throughout the whole world, maybe throughout the universe, you know? I mean... So yeah, those are that. The hat, the red black, is very uh, is significant in the Afal culture. He's, uh -huh. He carries these colors, you know, and all this can be, you know, if if someone needs validation or for it to be validated, it is like he makes an elike. It's a necklace that is like every bead red black, red black, red black, red black, and if you look into that, and that's a very uh, those are all the things if you're honoring him. It's almost like back in the Santeria, you know, in those mm -hmm. days of the Cubans. Um, yeah. You know, you would build altars. You would have the red, the black. And there's certain deities that you need, you know, whether it be cigar, rum, fruits, you know, and these things, if you, if you, if you invoke these things and you, and if they're satisfied with your offering, then they'll, then they'll assist you in this life path that we have. Uh -huh. Thanks. Yep. How about, this is the oldest piece in the show, and maybe yep. you could tell us about this and how it, how it led to the rest, if it oh, did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this one's very significant to me, you know? And like I had told you earlier today that I am in the process of making it on a huge, huge canvas. For a while, I, I, I kind of put it in, I kind of buried it a little bit, you know? Because it was so potent to me um yeah i mean it brings a lot of you know remembrance of of a certain pain that i was in at that time you know isn't that what 1988 so you know i was 16 17 years old i was highly like i couldn't figure out the world that was around me and ah. um i had a really hard time acclimating to to just uh you know as you come you know childhood teenage years and then you're set off into the world and for me it was very uh it just didn't it wasn't an, an easy transition so i was seeing a counselor at the time you know people said oh you know maybe you know some therapy or whatnot and i guess you know i was very down <laughs> depressed or whatnot and the woman would have me write journal and but the words just didn't really seem to like they didn't really seem to help for me and so she's you know she was very she was an awesome i feel very you know she was she was good you know she 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 was really like behind me trying to heal myself and so she uh said why don't you draw a picture and that to me i was like okay you know that seemed to click you know so i drew this she says, draw the depression, draw the feeling, the dark feeling that you have, you know, inside. And, and so this is what I came in. After I was done, I was like, oh, man, like, 
bro, this is it, you know, like, this is like, this like, and this was the first time I think, you know, besides drawing, you know, for fun or, or just for like, you know, like to see like, oh, can I replicate this and make myself and like, be like, oh, that's cool. I can do this. You know, I have, you know, mind to hand to skill doing it. Mm -hmm. But when I saw, when I did this, I was like, this came from like deep inside, you know? So it's hmm. not about a skill set. It's more about a feeling and it's still like looking at it, you know, it still like moves me, you know, because I mean, it was intense for me, but I did feel like a, re a relief, you know, from doing that. And that was when it kind of clicked and I was like, okay, this might be like a, you know, something that I can do in the future to just alleviate what's going on, you know, with me. Hmm. And so, yeah, I'm very like, I'm very, uh, I don't want to say attached to it because that was a long, long time ago. And since then I've learned to, to find other ways to find, you know, happiness to find peace you know mm -hmm. but hmm. you know as you can see like in the hair the corner the the sad person i was just in i was just like overwhelmed with so much uh grief at the time and the scars you know are going across the no yeah. is just like uh ah like no you know just kind of saying you know the eyes are scattered and it almost looks like almost you know like demon you know but mm -hmm. If it, I mean, you know, I don't, I mean, you know, I, I don't really put it in that category, but it was just, uh, if I can convey the way that I was feeling at that time, I think, I guess, I, th I feel that I did, uh, you know, hmm. it's right on. <laughs> well, let's take a look at some, some later images like this. Uh, oops, there we go. Come back. I notice that the, the mask keeps reappearing. Yes, it does. Of course. I mean, we're all wearing them these days, you know? Uh -huh. so it was, uh, that was just of the hysteria of, you know, mm -hmm. when, when the, when the coronavirus came, you know, uh -huh. of course I was like, you know, frightened for just humanity and just wondering what the hell. I don't think we've ever had a, at least in my lifetime, I've never, there's never been a situation where you know there are things it's very localized sometimes where it's like you know oh, okay this country has this or this uh you know hmm. these people have that but it was a worldwide situation mm -hmm. and we all had to like we all had to adjust to that and the mm -hmm. mask you know, for, for a while I, I really wanted to put words on it uh -huh. because but then I decided not to because I didn't want to give a dialogue to people. I wanted them to just, if they can feel what I was trying to portray, then they can feel it. If not, then whatever, so what? But, but the mask thing, I think there was a time when it all started, you know, you have the people that are going, oh, it's just all bullshit, you know, it's just like, uh, is this not real? Is this like another like uh, situation to, you have like the conspiracy theorist kind of people, you know, that that are just like, oh, uh, they're just trying to like get rid of the economic situation and they're just trying to uh, scare everybody. But so I kind of, you know, I, I kind of absorb that a little bit, you know, I see people like I would see people protesting or, you know, this and that, like, uh, you know, the master, you know, you know, you're all doing this. I had a job at the time. And, and I was in charge of like manning the door or whatever. And people would very get like, very, really like just pissed, you know, like, as if I was violating their human rights. And I understood <laughs> it, you know, I was with them, man. I was like, you know, I, but I don't know what's going on. I'm not in charge, you know, of what, of, of this uh, mandate to wear masks, you know? Uh -huh. And, uh, and as we see, I mean, that was 2019. It's unfolding now, you know, I think hopefully we're, getting to like a better a better space but mm. it was like it was a very I, I feel it's a very humanitarian painting you know just trying to <laughs> capture that the one on the left was just the anxiety that i have seen everybody feel all the time of wondering if 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 we're not going to make it you know is like is this mm. thing going to knock us out mm -hmm. and I, I mean anyone you or anyone that's listening to this i mean that's something that we all have in common. You know, we can all, for the first time, you know, and 
like I said, in my lifetime, in a worldly event, we can all relate to that situation of how we all felt. If, you know, scared was obviously the first one, you know, and just concern and like, what the hell is going on? You know, it was like a, it was like a global tragedy that, and then nobody, and this, there were people saying, is this bullshit or not? Or is this real? You know? Mm. So I think that was important. And I understand questioning it. I don't support, you know, it's not about that. My politics doesn't matter. But, but yeah, that's what I was trying to, I was trying to just put that out there because I was like, wow. It was a, you know, it floored me, you know? And if it didn't floor everybody else, and then uh, I have some doubts. <laughs> See. Let's take a look at this. I, I don't know what to make of this. Um, on the left is the whole painting, and on the uh -huh. right, there is a text. A lot of your paintings have text. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he left the earth through a hole in his arm mm -hmm. in search of what he'd left behind. What does this mean? Yeah, well, the painting, the purple and all that was very uh -huh. present. The journal entry was from years ago. Um, yeah, the hole in his arm, I mean, for, for a while there, I was, uh, I tried to escape, you know, for a while. Uh -huh. I, dabbled uh -huh. in, in, I dabbled in some drug addiction, you know? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. so, I wondered. Uh, yeah. Huh. So that was, uh, that was what that was from, you know? Uh -huh. um, since then, you know, it was 20 years ago. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, I can, I, at first I was going to sway away from it, you know, not really mm -hmm. get into that, but I don't mind, you know, I'm, I'm better now. And, but like I said, with that, the no painting, you know, the, the, the depression painting, I, I couldn't figure it out. So I escaped through, you know, using heroin, mm -hmm. you know, for a while. Huh. So that was, that, that meant. Here's some more paintings with text on them. Um, so you take stuff from your journal and you put them into the paintings or do you do new stuff when you do a painting? No, I take it from the journal. The journal is the most, you know, it's very um, precise, you know, it's very, uh, it's very tangible, you know, mm -hmm. because. Hmm. Uh, so is it fair to say these are all autobiographical? Oh yeah. For sure. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Tingles in my yeah, I mean, I, I mean, in Autobi, I'm very like self absorbed. You know, I'm just trying to work my way out of this web sometimes uh -huh. you know, and try to figure out what the hell is going on. But uh -huh. the journal things I do love, you know, I like to make them bigger. It's very hard to wake up, you know, or from and, 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 and just like jam, like boom, like, right into a canvas, you know? Uh -huh. So it's very tangible for me to use a small a notebook, you know, and it's uh -huh. always, always right there how some people would keep like a Gideon's Bible. I keep a notebook right there. And, and then as soon as I wake up, it could be at three in the morning or this is very erratic, you know? Mm -hmm. God bless my wife, you know, for... <laughs> <laughs> and I see that but, you're, you're using all sorts of different media here. The one on the right is simply a notebook page with color. And the one on the yeah. left is yeah, elaborately framed. Pins, you know? And then I like, I really love the white, the white on the black, you know? Uh -huh. I mean... It just really pops out for me. Okay. And then the face, you know, those, those, whatever, uh, it's not really even spirals, but those lines that you see coming out from the face, that's a very, that, that's a commonality, like the spirals as, as, a, as in the one on Tangles in My Blood on the left. Mm -hmm. but the one, um, I don't know if you guys, if, you, if you've ever seen like Ram Dass, you know, there's like this circular thing going on and the, there's like these, so I feel that it means something. It, there's some kind of, uh, I, it's not just to do, it's there for a reason, you know? Mm -hmm. there, I noticed a I, number of your paintings have circles in them. Like, uh, that it can transcend time or something. That's how it feels like to me, mm -hmm. you know? But the human animal was done in... It was kind of cool because it was like, you know, um, I felt like I was in a new stage of my life. Um, mm -hmm. It was after this painting, I think that I feel, I felt that I could actually put some of the stuff that I've done out there. Okay. And that was, so that was a very, uh, that was a very, 
it was a peak time, you know, for my artistic endeavor. Because, uh, you know, the human, I was like, you know, I look into the mirror and I can't recognize myself. I've morphed into another form, you know, it's just like the beginning excerpt, excerpt of it. But I was like, okay, somebody was saying, you know, I had, a, I felt like there was a little, a push, you know, to, to get my stuff out there that perhaps, yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> okay, here's some more of these. I'm assuming somehow biographical, or is this, this more getting into um, shadow imagery? Uh, yeah, in rhymes I, like, called I like both of them. You're correct on both, you know? Uh huh. In rhymes called the serpent, you know, there is a shadow imagery. You know, there's yeah. a serpent, of course, you know, coming from the shoulder. Those things on the side are almost like peripheral vision. You know, uh huh. Images that I've seen, and I'm like, well, okay. At first, I disregarded them as if they weren't relevant but uh -huh. then but then i was like okay they keep happening over and over and over again and when things happen with me like you know bop 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 bop, bop i'm like okay you're supposed to take notice you know uh -huh. i try to just kind of be like a like an actor in a play or whatever i'm just like you know i just want i'm just like the conduit you know i'm not i'm not i don't paint from an ego kind of base where i'm just like running with like with what 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 I want to do, I'm always like listening and trying to channel these things because I've done the other way before and it just didn't really feel, it just kind of felt like I was just kind of, <laughs> just kind of whatever into my own thing, you know, but it didn't have as much force behind it. And I can stand <sighs> behind these because when they come from other things and if they came like through me, then it makes me feel, uh, it may just, I, I can just stand behind it, you know. The magic one, 21, that's another journal entry, you know. Mm -hmm. um, they've tried to conceal it and then coconut wireless. Coconut wireless is a thing in Hawaii. Like before the internet came, all <laughs> the locals would, I mean, I, you probably know, if you've been here for a while, you know. Uh -huh. They just like, you know, they talk to each other and it would go all throughout the island and they would just like, you know. So that's what they mean by that, you know. And I was like, oh, that's cool. I I love the the local the lo the local culture, you know. Mm. I've been wireless. amazed so, at the coconut wireless. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then we hold the current. Is you know there? I, I believe you know there's a there is a current. I think that's running through. I try to catch it when I can. You know, and what I mean by current, you know, I mean everyone from Alifas Levi. Levy and, and Alistair Crowley, there's a current of of things going through. And I think that if uh, if you choose to connect to it, then then it, it opens up a whole new a whole new paradigm of the, of what this world is really about, you know. And mm -hmm. I think as we progress, you know, in this lifetime, and it seemed to really happen after 2020, you know, we had a little setback from the from the um, um, the COVID situation, sure. But I do believe that we're we're on a fast track to to entering a, a whole brand new world, you know. And I mean, I'm hopeful for that, you know, because I think it's time for I think it's time for humanity to, to elevate, you know, in a different way. And I I feel maybe it might scare some people or whatever, but again, this is huh. my opinion. Time will tell, you know. You'd be like, oh, that that one. If this is, re you know, with this being recorded, you'd be like, oh, that that one, that one guy said oh. that one time, you know. <laughs> I Maybe see. But here's some more dream imagery. These don't have text. Um, nope. Butterfly effect, the whirl of a hummingbird. There's text in the corner of the butterfly effect. Is there? That was when I was living in Taos, New Mexico. And uh -huh. I was getting, uh, I would sit. I would, we would. We lived in an Earthship, which is totally an off the grid. Um, uh-huh i know of the, the neighborhood yeah 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 we were living in the earthship community and and so everything off grid so if you eliminate the uh electricity and like you know all the if you eliminate certain uh vibratory things and i feel that things come i would go to sleep for a while and i would have my phone you know just like whatever with an alarm set 
And I would wake up and there would be scrolls, scrolls of numbers like zero, zero, nine, 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 and then sometimes even like like a picture as if something like you know hit that button and like made a photograph it would always be at the ceiling you know because my phone was laying down flat and i would tell my wife about it and she's like oh you should you know document these things you know what's going on you know <laughs> originally the painting was going to be in the back of just like those numbers that i saw nine 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 no 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 it was almost like an algorithm that was happening uh -huh. and um but I do have another piece like that. But this was just like, so that's where that came from, you know. I like the the little zing, you know, going to the horse, you know. Mm -hmm. had, there were horses down the way. I had always had a very, uh, I don't horses and me have always had a, they've been a part of my life, but they're very, when I was like eight years old, I had, I was riding with my mom in a pinto which I guess is a horse. I didn't know that then. Uh -huh. And it was raining. The song uh, um, Riders on the Storm was playing. Oh, yeah. Which has horse, you know, by the doors, you know. Again, at that moment, I did not know that. Yeah. And then I didn't collect it all until ever. And then we there was a wild horse on the side of the road that jumped over and she ran into it. And she hit the horse into the air. He went up, slammed down onto only my side of the passenger seat and at that time in those days you didn't have to use uh seat belts you know so i was sitting on a, like a tape box <laughs> and a little booster seat mm -hmm. and i had a toy horse in my hand and i dropped it and i crawled down to pick it up and in that you know whatever three second moment i dropped down to pick it up and that the real live horse smashed down onto the car that she hit it and smash down the hood all the way down to the seat. Where if I would have been sitting there, I would have been, you know, there was no chance for survival, you know. But I was stuck down there, pouring rain, and I have this horse in my hand. And at this, I, I didn't really, I mean, it was an intense moment, but uh, it wasn't really fear that, it wasn't like a, ah, like traumatic moment. It was just like, and as I got older, I connected, I was like, whoa, whoa what the hell? what you know i started to take notice of um of that situation and i was like, <laughs> almost felt like kind of guided a little bit you know i feel very grateful that that happened not that that happened but i feel grateful of the of how i got out of it you know <laughs> uh -huh. i see huh so that's when i say like back to that one, when i say the butterfly effect uh-huh that's what that means you know i see because there is a i feel that there is a a transition of time i you know that something happened right there that was too coincidental to just be like oh well you got lucky you know i don't believe it. i don't believe in that you know hmm. the world of the hummingbird you know 22 that was very recent you know i love the swirls again we're going back to the ram das kind of thing uh -huh. the potato, you know that kind of exists and and that i painted feverishly those three things like just like, you know, circle, circle, bop, bop, bop. And hmm. I'm just trying to get a momentum of what's, uh, I'm trying, I was trying to put my, like, my soul into that, into that, you know, and I think, I think it works, you know. The entity <laughs> that's going there, he's coming through a vortex right there again of, uh, of another dimensional world, you know. Uh -huh. And he's, you know, he's coming out trying to say something. And so that was my, uh, that was my portrayal of that. Interesting. Huh. I thought it, I'm an art historian. I can't help myself. I thought I might scroll through a few of these, these older images. Yeah, of don't know Korean images. Bosch is amazing, you know? And yeah, I wonder if, if he's had an impact on you. I'm he's had an of, impact on me only in the way that of, of what I'm experiencing. I mean, I feel that he's experiencing too. It's a very different time, you know, that we're mm -hmm. existing in. But I'm very into, uh, I'm very into uh, the parallels. I'm very into connecting, you know. For me, mm -hmm. like, it, it's all about, you know, the art is about connecting with people, you know, trying to convey information, trying to, mm -hmm. 
trying to, you know, be like, hey, have you seen this? Like, you know, kind of like in layman's terms. I mean, that's what's happening, you know. Mm. But, I mean, of course, he's guy, also trying to trying to show what's going to happen next. <laughs> yeah, I know he came from a very he came he it was, his was a very biblical kind of thing, you know, the you know mm -hmm. the underworld of Christianity and and in that sense. But yeah, I mean, some of these things that he's painting. I don't think I don't think he's just like dreamt this shit up, you know. I and mean, it was just like, oh, I'm gonna paint these really cool things, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. he was uh, he dug into it, you know. And I and I envy that because some people they just pass that by, you know. And mm -hmm. and you know, I mean, you got him, you got you know, Van Gogh had his own madness, you know. And I love the squirrels that he did of the way that he saw things, and I love that, you know. I'm thinking of Goya. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The sleep of the reason. Owl. Yeah, the sleep of reason produces monsters. A famous nineteenth or actually eighteenth century image of, of yeah. dream we imagery, talking, madness you know, imagery. Yeah, I and mean, we were talking two hundred years, you know. And how does this thing keep happening over and over and over and over again? And if you can't, you can't disregard that, you know, that it's just like some psychosis or some like whatever, you know, some trip that somebody's on, you know. I mean. These are, this is things that are, that I think are valid and I think they're real. And I tried to, in my life, you know, I can, I, 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 I acknowledge that, you know. Uh -huh. Of course, part of the fun with Goya is I think maybe like you a little bit, um, he was responding to current events, which were horrible, Napoleonic Wars sure. invading Spain and all. Yes, and absolutely. it's kind of triggered all of his, his visions and his, and his hallucinations. And he tried to, kind of express the madness of war through just madness imagery. Yeah, I mean, mad suffering, you know? I mean, a lot more than what we're going through. I mean, that was like a... I love how his head, you know, the head down, the, like, just uh -huh. the despair, you know, of like, ah, oh, you know? Uh, uh, it's unbearable, you know? Yeah. <laughs> going on, you know? But he portrayed it well. Dolly I'm also... Master, you know, he's amazing, you know? I'm when also I first seeing started painting, I, 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 used to, I used to always try to be like, how... How does this guy like get it? It almost looks like a photograph, you know. Yeah. And it was very like frustrating to me. I was like, I, I would kind of be like, wow, how how does he do it? You know. Have but you I love these things, you know. Have you, know, have you seen that, these in person? Some no, of the dollies are so no, amazing. They're tiny, kind of like your paintings. They're I very very tiny. I want to see Basquiat in person. You know. I, oh, I know I have yeah. to New York. You know. But. Yeah. but I mean, he, he, he's amazing, you know. He was a force to be reckoned with, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. I love this whole, the whole persona that he put on, you know. I love, he was a total artist, like, through and through, man. And, uh, you know, he had the help of Goya, Gala, Gala? Is it Gala or Goya? His, oh, Gala, yeah. yeah. I mean, she, like, you know, he was so scattered and it was just all over the place. I mean, if he didn't... <laughs> If she didn't keep him like reined in together, like I don't know if he would be like where he was, but that doesn't matter. But I mean, the things he produced when I look at his art, it's like it's just fascinating. It makes me like it, it brings me great comfort. I love him, you know, it's great, you know. He bended time, and I love that Dada era too, you know. Uh huh. It's just so it's so fascinating, you know. Uh -huh. All those guys, um, what's his name, Bashar? But you probably know you're the art historian, um. For, uh, <laughs> Richard, something starts at the B, but all those guys. I mean, they just started to do things oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They just started to instead of being so finite, you know, they just started to bend time, and and with doing that, they they totally opened up a whole new world of art, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'm also thinking. I'm wondering how much this might have sunk in in your your formative years, yeah. <laughs> or is that just me? Yeah, I love Crumb. You know, he broke barriers, man. He was great. He yeah. was great. You know? That's he fun. Was, I'm also, well, oh, this has all sort of in my head when I look at your paintings. I, that's what I get for living too long. But um, <laughs> let's go look at no, some. I mean, just, let me just talk about Crumb for a little bit. I mean, he was like, he got so much shit for the things he did, you know? And like, I think, you know, especially in America, the hangups with, you know, with sexuality, it's like, so it's just such a, it's so warped. You know, it's so sure. the Europeans are way more advanced in that way than we are, you know, but Crumb broke down those things, you know, I mean, the, you know, the, yeah, you know, I mean, look, look at this, sure. I mean, look at this stuff, you know, 
he was talking shit. He was making fun of things. He was like, he was he was painting on paintings what people were thinking at that time. But at that time, it was like, oh no, we're not supposed to do this. We're not supposed to be like aroused arous in any way. We're not supposed to be, you know, this and that, you know. And then he would twist it around with these funny like the comic book, you know. I think he got shit for a little while, but I think he's a badass, you know. There's so many, you know. I think we need more of that, you know, to to break like this 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 thing that we're in, you know. We're behind. Mm -hmm. I think we're behind. Hmm. Let's go with all that in mind. Let's take a look at some. I, I picked some paintings kind of at random um, that interested me, and uh, now we know a little bit about what you're getting at and where you're coming from. Maybe just comment briefly on, on some of these. Sure. Yeah. Night portal. You know, again, you have the swirly thing. You know, which trying to convey into a two dimensional form of just like. Uh, the vastness, you know, of what you can walk through. The two, the cats, it's really just one cat, just multiple, you know, <laughs> my cat, Rodrigo, you know, and then it has a Hawaiian flower there, you know, the banana flower. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and he's a uh, photograph. I think he's the only photograph in, in the book you're showing is. us. Yeah, yeah, I felt, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I kind of like swayed away from it, you know, but he was, I mean, the, the photograph was just a masterful, I just dug it, you know, I was like, oh, I cannot mm -hmm. replicate that you know, with, uh, <laughs> with paint, you know, so I put him on there, and mm -hmm. I love the foot, you know, going out, you know, yeah. the pyramid is a common thing, you know, the pyramid, the spirals, that same face, they're in all the paintings, mm -hmm. what I do, of what I'm, of what's happening with me right now. You know? Let's the take a look at another just, one. Here's another right, one with uh, the circles, and I don't, oh yes, there's a pyramid in circles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the sound, cellular roundabout and the snail. The snail <laughs> is just like, kind of shit, you know, I just threw it in there. I like the faces on the on the side of the painting. Mm -hmm. Those are things that come through in my, you know, in my meditations and went on in my, in my psyche. The oh, man, okay. I guess, with the, with the, with the bubble hair is a commonality, you know, actually, obviously, you know, the phallic symbol mm -hmm. is there. Hmm. Then there's this one, which isn't like any of the others. That, that no, we're it's not. That was done on a whisk, you know, on a uh -huh. whisk. But it had a lot of power in it. I was really, okay. fun. I was in a, I was in a weird space. It was like, I was very like, uh, I just grabbed a piece of cardboard from the back of a book, you know, mm -hmm. and then just like blasted it on there, you know. Mm. One thing I would like to say that was cool that Andres like said like that. He, they kind of like people gravitated toward that because it was just straight from like bop to that. There was, and my mind did not get in between me and the painting, you know? So I just kind of threw it out there. Mm -hmm. And at first it was like just a black image, you know? And I was like, wait a minute, that looks like a, it looks like a board. And I, I tinkered with it, you know? And I was like, wow, that looks cool. But I like how scattered it is. It's almost like very, it's very erratic, you know? Mm -hmm. And to my, surprise i guess it's just like it's cool that a lot of the that those ones and the small paintings when they're very erratic and not so concise mm -hmm. i must be portraying some kind of emotion into them because that's or what people are like are digging them you know what i mean uh. not that i ever measure myself with the amount of money or paintings that i sell but it is cool to know like what people like how they can relate to them you know and that was mm -hmm. when, it was cool because diaz bought that one you know and that's fucking rad you know, this is a big one. Yeah. Looks like a story. I don't know what the story is, but it looks like one. The last procession. Yeah, I mean, I I could I could write a story to it. You know, I mean, I, I put in the label down there. You know? But I like the, the hopscotch. You know, the mm -hmm. shadow figure in the middle doing the hopscotch. Oh yeah, backwards numbers thirty three, eleven, twenty two. Always dealing with numerology because I feel that that's something that I should pay attention to. Huh. The figure with the wheels on him, I mean, he's rolling back and forth, his arms crossed, almost in judgment of, like, if, is, is this right? Is this, is this, you know, he's, like, kind of going, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> the face on the right is in a, is in many other paintings, you know, just kind of with the O mm -hmm. mouth, like, just kind of sitting there, patiently waiting. I feel that the guy with the wheels is the one that's, like, 
that captures the, the the image the most, he's the one that's like, I don't know, I, I'll use the word in charge, you know? He's mm -hmm. like, the other one, it seems like gasped a little bit. He's like stepping back of like, what the hell's going on here? Mm -hmm. You know, the statue, the figure of like the, you know, with the anchor mouth mm -hmm. is like, just like a, is a very like stable figure standing there. You know, the triple eyes, Mm -hmm. I like the multiple eyes, you know, kind of like in the Hindu religion, mm -hmm. just trying to see multiple things, you know, trying to broaden. Huh. You know? And then you have the another ghost in the back, in the on the far left side, my left. Oh, um, I see. Yeah, I've come huh. into it. maybe like a Bacchus kind of figure, you know. Okay. Huh. And then never. Never. Never, sometimes, always. They have a song called Sometimes, Always. Okay. And, uh, yeah, this one, you know, this one was like a, it was a very fast moment, too, you know, that I tried to capture real quick, you know. I, I was, uh, I made, like, little, I made, I made a box for myself, almost, to where mm -hmm. I just, like, went straight from Dream to the canvas. The canvas was a painting before, and then I just gessoed it black, you know, and it was sitting there, and it was almost like calling like me, like, oh, what? What's going to go here? Like, who, who yeah. am I going to become? You know, who am I? You know, <laughs> and then one night, it was, it was very close to where I was trying to put all the paintings into the show, and I was like, no, I was like, this one's like, calling, and this one's like beckoning me, you know? I was like, <laughs> yeah. You know? And so I, I had a dream, woke up, went straight to the painting just like scratch it out real quick with pasta pin white you know i love that real vibrant white on black you know mm -hmm. and and just like threw it down there you know through sometimes always because it's just trying to say that nothing's finite you know like like you might think this way one moment this way another moment i don't think you can never i don't think you can say always it is sometimes always because we're always shifting to what we believe is real to what believe is happening I don't think nobody has a true, like, those people that try to say, like, I know this for sure, you know what I mean? Unless you're, like, a banker and you're dealing with mathematics, I don't mm -hmm. think anyone knows what the hell's going on for sure, you know? So that's kind of what that means. I see. Huh. Huh. Well, I'm, um, I'm seeing the masks continue. continue. You know? The big old, what's that? The masks. And also, I've... I've noticed, um, again, I didn't know anything about your art till really today, but I took the photographs. Um, I found, I was fascinated by all the horn figures. Yes. That yeah, are coming yeah. up. Very commonality. And, it doesn't I mean, mean like, it's never like, uh, go back. Go back? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's never, it's not about, uh, you know, if Christian people think like, you know, it means like devil, you know, it's not like that. I mean, it can go back way back to like Greek times, you know, Dionysus kind of thing was very, mm -hmm. too, you know, okay. was, uh, I was in, you know, the Hawaiian forest was coming through. I tried to give a little bit resemblance of the flag, you know, on the far left, you know, and mm -hmm. I was, I, I had very, I was very, very, very much immersed without any, without human con, you know, other than my media family. I had ha had the opportunity to be in a situation where I was just amongst the trees, you know, and just like in forests, you know. So I was really feeling nature at that time, you know, and that mm -hmm. the feminine came through. It is a little bit, I mean, obviously the body feminine, you know, with the breasts and everything, but the, the face is still the common face that I paint a lot, you know, that came through. But I feel that one, like, I like how it, Kind of portrays the forest and then on that far right side is the midnight sky of all the brilliant stars you know that are around around here and i mean we have such a it almost seems like we're closer to the celestial sphere than than all the other places i've lived you know hawaii has that magnetism about it you know and it's oh, sure. awesome but it can also be very fierce you know at least from my perspective you know i mean there's a beauty but there's also you know when Pele and like all those things start happening, if anyone who's been here for a while and yep. and I feel that you know, I think people know that that it's not just about you know flowers and like you know 
and beauty and lays, you know, there's a, <laughs> there's a force here that should be reckoned with. And you need, it, it seems to set me right. You know, sometimes like I definitely get put into place a lot of times. I have to right there on the right 22. Uh, the level of the course, there's the horns again, too. You know, that just came straight out of a dream. I painted with oils on, uh, you know, the frame was like kind of like stick, you know, cheesy. It came from, I, just, <laughs> I would just grab shit from like a thrift store, you know, a couple <laughs> bucks here and there. And my wife would be like, oh, hey, hey, look, I found all these paintings, you know, that nobody wants anymore. And I would paint over them. Oh, yeah. And I'd feel after I painted over them, if there was any force to them or if there was any like, movement you know uh -huh. and in that top face i painted quite a few times and so that's it that one was just kind of like verbatim like real quick you know there's not a lot of uh backstory to that one okay let's move i'm gonna speed up a little because we're getting a little shallow Absolutely. on time but sure. um one thing i both i put thought, these together you know, uh both these paintings showed me some of your mythological background, Thoth from Egypt and the horned yeah. figure. I thought that was interesting that you're you're mining the ancient gods and goddesses. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think they should have reverence, you know. I know that they they, you know, just because you know, because I have a cell phone doesn't mean I think about those things, you know. I mean, like we're 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 moving forward, you know, but at the same time, there's a backstory to everything, you know. So Thoth was very, you know, the bird, you know. That's like the god of knowledge, yeah. Egyptian, 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 you know. Yeah. Um, artwork, you know, it's always there in the hieroglyphs. The shadow uh -huh. spirit was. Uh, I like the corner being a lot, you know. It's almost Thoth again, you know. Mm -hmm. As you can see, these paintings are done like within like a few days of each other, and uh -huh. you know, you have the middle guy with the horns and the phallic, and then. And then you have, you know, that was a total dream. The one on the right it was a very, like, very vivid dream of what I just saw at that moment, woke up, and I skipped the journal. And I, and it was, it's a small painting, you know, so mm -hmm. like 10, something like that. And so I just went and I just jammed straight into it, you know. And that's like my favorite way to paint, you know, just to go straight. Huh. Truth, uh, full disclosure, I just bought it. <laughs> hey, all right. Thanks, Larry. It very much appealed to me as well. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. I think I'm going to, with apologies, skip a little ahead here. Yeah, go for oh, it. one thing I noted is that when Andre hung the show, he did some stuff of his own. Like these are two paintings he mushed together and Every, if you haven't noticed before, please notice the uh, the wonderful sticky tape labels. <laughs> a, uh -huh. There's a kind of a, a punk quality to the to the. Oh hanging. yeah, absolutely, and I love it. I wrote you them. Covered, you, you covered. I wrote on them. them. Yep, that was that's your writing. Yeah, we talked about it, you know. And he was, you know, I had been to other art shows before, and it's like that very, like you know, laminated, like very fat, you know, kind of like you know, you know, hoity, uh -huh. uh, what do I say? Uh, very professional, you know cards talk you know printed on there and he had asked me if it would you know if it'd be cool just to put like tape and just jam it you know because the whole feeling we were trying to do is like i mean i don't know i i wouldn't call it you know fine art or whatever that means you know but i mean um it was cool i, I mean we had the we started out with we were going to do blue and then put white um graphics on white writing on mm -hmm. it and then we turned it around and we went from yellow to black and we thought that took away from the paintings because the blue like kind of sometimes it was such a darker color that it almost like took the focus you know away uh -huh. from the painting and i agreed with him on that but i do like the punk i mean i was a punk rocker you know i probably <laughs> still am you know i mean that's my i i mean yeah so as far if, if, if the rough edges i think it really uh resonates with me and I'm not all about it being clean and not too tidy all the time, you know, and my mm -hmm. work isn't like that, you know, so I feel that he did, he did justice in that, you know, I mean, I, I wouldn't have thought to do that, you know, but I was like, oh yeah, let's do it, you know, and after I saw that it worked. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, three little themes, again, I'm going to rush a little with apologies, but uh, one, I noticed that uh, the music certainly gets into your painting and I, I suppose vice versa yeah yeah you know 
like I said, there's all kinds of, you know, I just take what I can get. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's visual, uh-huh. sometimes it's uh, film, sometimes it's uh, it's music, you know? Uh-huh. I have an, another painting there called Audio Hallucinations, which I was trying to... There we are. Yeah, I was trying to uh, convey what I was hearing into a painting. And sometimes it just doesn't work. Uh-huh. It works there for me. But what I'm saying is that sometimes I can, like, grasp onto music better than I can to trying to get a visual, you know? So... Uh-huh. Uh, music is huge in my life, you know, paint, I make songs, I, I, uh, I try to channel just like the same things that I put on the canvas, I try to channel those things into music and just like all the little nuances that go on besides just like, you know, the regular like C major chord or, you know, C chords and, and uh-huh. piano chords. So, huh. yeah, that guitar work, flip, go back to where you were. Yeah, that one was this a little, there was a moment making songs in the, it was like a duality of it, you know? Those, those eyes in there are my eyes that uh-huh. like from a photograph, and then the <laughs> guitar was on fire. Yeah, it looks to I me like... I was a little frustrated, and then I was a little, <laughs> it doesn't mean that like on fire, like, in quote, you know, like it was a good thing, but I was almost like willing to like burn my guitar because it was a little bit mm-hmm. like, uh, I wasn't able <laughs> to do what I wanted to do. Yeah, you, you mentioned that Picasso was one of your, your mentors, if you will. And I look at that, and I think that kind of looks like Picasso's naughty son setting the guitar on fire. <laughs> nice. Yeah, there was a woman that mount, that was uh, doing the desk, and she asked, said that Picasso was there. I mean, I was like, wow, that's, wow, that's awesome, you know? <laughs> but I mean, I love his cubism, you know? I mean, when he turned yeah. from... I can- doing what he did and then went to that. I think it opened a whole new dimension of art, you know, instead of everyone, you know, you have Rembrandt, you have all those people that are just very precise trying to do, I mean, and it's amazing, you know, I forgot the guy that does like just the dots, you know, and like just like hours upon hours, like, but always, yeah, yeah. But I mean, if you were trying to always, if that was like the, if that was the box we were all painting in, then some people would be, I think we've been missing some stuff, you know what I mean? So that cubism that as things shifted, I was like, oh, wait, you know, it kind of was like made made an avenue for for another thing, you know? You don't have to be like exact, you know what I mean? Tracing and making it look exactly the way of what you're looking at, you know? Uh-huh. Huh. Um, I also noticed, I don't know if there's... <laughs> If this is rhyme or reason, but uh, you had several paintings on birth and motherhood, and I was just wondering if if that's life experience or, or or what's going on here. Yeah, it's life experience. This painting that started. It was very. It was on pause for a while. My brother, my older brother, had a baby, and I just thought about this. I was actually I painted it for him. He lived ah, in uh-huh. and I never it never got it never got to him, but. Yeah, he had children. I mean, he was like 10 years older than me, so he had children before I did. But I was just thinking of like when he first, like he, he was so stoked on his first, mm-hmm. on his, the birth of his first child. And this uh, is a painting I kind of did, like a portrait of him, of like the the figure and then like the the baby in the back, just wondering what it was like, you know, to mm-hmm. have a like, child to, to, to do that, you know. Uh, so that was just a... It was a real, that's all, that's what it was. <laughs> I see. And we have a joy of childbirth. Uh, the joy of birth, yeah. That was, that's totally me, you know, that. And then. Birth, not so much, like, in, not so much in a physical sense, but that was just the birth of, like, uh, for a moment there, I felt like we were, I felt really happy. And I felt like we were, like, maybe, like, getting through something uh, that was very trying, you know. So yeah, it's just a birth of life, it has nothing to do with children. That's nice. And then I noticed you say this is a very recent one, the Celestial Lactation. Yeah, that was probably done like, for, uh, I don't know, maybe a week before the show opened. Ah. Of uh, Celestial Lactation. Yeah. Uh huh. And to recall that you are God, you know, just trying to give power to people, you know, mm-hmm. of like what we're capable of. She's a celestial being, you know, but she's very much, you know, in the stars. I tried to make it seem like she was floating, you know, as I did with all the the dots you know in there and then still the movement around the corner i use the glycan you know to huh? i wanted to have that shine coming through almost like a little bit of a 
Egyptian thing going on, but the blue uh -huh. body that might be the blue body has come in men and women, you know, it's not, I know she has like, you know, big titties and everything, you know, but it's not so much about like the sexual thing, it's, uh, the femininity, you know, that's coming through. It didn't come yeah. through either way. Uh, there is some of the pieces are, are more sexual, obviously, than others. Uh -huh. And sure. um, looks like a notebook page here and then a larger painting. Yeah, a desire that was just, uh, you know, in, you know, it's kind of, it's not like, it's not in the forefront, but, you know, uh -huh. woman's figure, you know, uh -huh. the booty, <laughs> dreadlock hair. You know, and uh, and then the faces, those three faces have been in a lot of other things that I've done, you know, the three eyes. Uh -huh. Sure. And then the scatter, just trying to make oh. movement. Uh-huh. No book page was just like a real quick, like jamming through. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, I felt like, you know, I, I don't have no problem expressing my sexuality. I don't think it's a, you know, I definitely put it on paper. You know, I think it's something that people to look at i don't think it's something you should sway away from i'm not living in the you know mm -hmm. in those times where like it's bad or whatever you know so it's just a very part it doesn't always make sense but it's i think it's always it's often there you know you have the woman bleeding you know her menstrual period you have the phallic symbols in the corner you know so <laughs> yeah I, i'm very much into that you know it kind of excites me it kind of gets me going and i feel that it's something that should be put out there that it's not something to sway away from or to be like afraid of mm -hmm. and then sometimes we get into this kind of imagery this one just means like i don't know if you mm -hmm. know if you've seen or like or hip to uh you know these days you know he and she and all the 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 verbiage that we have you know is like the blending <clears throat> the blending you know they and them and i uh, i just kind of feel like perhaps we're moving to a moment where like you know the masculine feminine you know back in the 50s and 60s or more 50s you know you had that you know woman did this man did that you had this masculine feminine divide of what was going on and i think now like it has nothing to do with me i'm just uh i'm just like um witnessing it you know that you know especially when you see like you know, I have teenage kids, so they, I see how they're, I'll, I'll be like, oh, he is going here. And they're like, no, dad, it's they. You know, so there's this blending right now that's going on that you mm -hmm. have to be, you have to acknowledge, you know, whether you like it or not. But it's something that's going on. And, I mean, there, there's an androgyny going on, you know. If that's the goal to it, I mean, I don't mean physically, but I do mean that it's just a, it's just like a, a stamp it's like a, a footprint of where we are now because obviously pretty much the woman it's a female woman but then she has you know a penis you know so it's a that that was my remark to that you know because it was just like a stamp you know like uh you know people you know there's that divide is like it's starting to blur you know? uh-huh um, final little thing I note is you've got these little tiny paintings and I kept the label in this picture so people can yeah. see how, how tiny they're three by three inch. Uh -huh. What got you started on these guys? Uh, they're fun. I just did them, you know, those ones, you know, there was no, I used pens, you know, for most mm -hmm. of those, you know, I like the, the seabird there, the, 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 the seagull. Uh huh. And that's uh, a seagull. Okay. Uh, just, it's a pelican, you know, more like pelican, I guess. Sorry. Okay. But like the rain, you know, it was just like the rain splashing down. I tried to get it, you know, coming through. And then I used just like pens on them. You know, it was very finite. It was a very focused kind of situation where the paintings are more like, wow, 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 like all over the place. Not all over the place, but there, there's a lot of movement involved, you know? Uh huh. I do like sometimes the finite thing, but when they're small, you have to be, I have to be very focused. And sometimes yeah. I have to be. Sometimes I don't like to be focused, like to be scattered. Those are charming. Thank you. Well, I'm going to end on this one. Who are you? Yeah. And thank you so much for sharing who you are and yeah. adding so much more depth to this this fascinating Absolutely. show. Absolutely, yeah. Thank you. Re really, I'm asking the other people that see it. You know, it's like who are who are you? You know, <laughs> like to wonder. You know, and I don't think I don't think we're just this bag of skin. You know, I think we're a lot more. I think we're a lot different than that. You know. Um, 
I so see. yeah, it's almost like a I don't know, it's like an Alan Watts kind of thing, you know, mm-hmm. like who, who are, Alan Watts, or, sure. or like you and I, we spoke before, we talked about Jung, you know, sure, Jung, you know, sure, and just like the the essence, you know, of who we are. Mm-hmm. I think we get too much, you know. I'm trying to break down the barriers of just like uh, two dimensional. I mean, I'm really, you know, fourth dimensional, fifth dimensional. I mean, that's where I like to. I like to dabble in that all day, you know. Mm-hmm. I have my little thing, Vincent Van Gogh, came on my mind, on my mind, you know, in the corner. Because I just <laughs> have, you know, I love him, you know. I think okay. he's and I have, I have no problem. I, I feel that, you know, that the psyche is a, is a lot bigger than what we try to put it in a box, you know. And when it's not in a box, um, people say that there's something like wrong or, or they try to, give you medication to fix it you know and i feel that as long if you can like get along in life and and you can break that box then that's when we'll uh expand as a humanity and there's a lot to learn from those type of people you know? mm-hmm. multiple, multiple dimensions of life okay well thank you that's a good place to wrap up and i really appreciate your your patience with my questions and wonderful explanations of these really fascinating beautiful paintings uh-huh. Yes, sir. Thank you for doing that. What you do, appreciate you. Great, thanks. And to everybody who views this, um, thank you for your attention. And remember the EHCC, the East Hawaii Cultural Center. Yeah, come see the <laughs> show, man. Come on, and come see the show. It's open until February twenty-five, and we'd love to have you come see it here in Hilo. Okay, thank you so much.